irregular migration and the dangers thereof. For obvious reasons, bordering on economic, justice, human rights, climate, etc., Nigerians, youths especially, are indeed ready to leave the country at any cost, and this is not surprising. However, one must ask, is the grass truly greener on the other side? In examining this issue, research and statistics show that for Africans, moving to Europe has become increasingly difficult. It is indeed a very high-risk situation. Thousands are now discovering this reality. Today, I wish to highlight a few dangers facing irregular migrants. They do say knowledge is power, and information shared may help you or someone you know. Some of the issues include exploitation by smugglers. Smugglers are criminals who pretend that both the journey and settling in Europe are easy in order to get money. Smugglers often lie about the safety of the route and modes of transport. The United Nations has sanctioned human traffickers in Libya for many crimes. An example of issues around this would be Angela, a 25-year-old Nigerian woman who was abandoned by her smuggler along with 50 others in the Sahara Desert and left to die. And only six of them survived. Smugglers are also known to sell migrants en route. They may also demand a ransom from family members. Being violent to the point of killing migrants are seen recently by smugglers who reportedly shot migrants on the beach in Libya for refusing to get on the boat. Kidnap and human trafficking. There are many stories of migrants being kidnapped when crossing Mali, Mauritania, and Niger, as well as trying to leave Libya. This often happens in the Sahara Desert and is sometimes planned in advance with drivers selling the migrants to kidnappers for large sums of money. This horrific experience goes hand in hand with the severe torture of the migrants. And we have the case of Azam, a 30-year-old Nigerian male, who recounted how masked kidnappers stomped the truck he was traveling in with 30 other irregular migrants, shot and killed the driver and three passengers as a means of instilling fear into the rest of them. These kidnappers proceeded to torture Azam and his companions daily until their families paid huge ransoms for their release. There are also regularly reported cases of migrants being robbed and dispossessed of their belongings by armed bandits as it travel through the desert. We have abuse and exploitation of children and adolescents. Migrant children are the most at risk of abuse. Three in four children and young adults face various forms of exploitation on their journey to Europe through the Mediterranean. The irregular migration journey is extremely dangerous for children who go without education for extended periods and face isolation and abuse. More than 1,200 migrant children died from 2014 to 2018 as recorded by the International Organization for Migration, otherwise known as IOM. And nearly half of them perished while attempting to cross the Mediterranean. The question arises, given the somewhat despondent nature of things in Nigeria and most African countries today, how do we encourage young people to refuse irregular migration options? As the question always arises, will you feed me and my family if you ask me not to leave? These are the issues, and government and citizens alike must rise up and put in place Social programs that empower the people, for this is the most sustainable panacea to irregular migration. I mean, that's just the truth. And, and uh, that final question just sums up everything. You're telling me not to go. Will you feed me and my family? <laughs> you say, I, <laughs> crazy question. Yes, I know. Yeah, I may be but, 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 <laughs> but, you know, the truth is, as much as we say, will you feed me and my family, uh -huh. let's look at the amounts that are used in this migration. Mm -hmm. This amounts can set up small and medium enterprises in Nigeria. Cooley. But, but, mm -hmm. love for the stability dreamt of there abroad right. with go. no balance or understanding of what you're going you to meet face, there, yes. we seem to think to, let me use the language, japa na the way forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, I was, when I was living in Benin, when I was a banker there, I, I mean, I had the first cultural shock. People 
families will sell their homes, mm -hmm. sell their properties mm -hmm. to send their children abroad. And they don't know what the child what is the going, going to do there or what there. the future is going to be like. They don't care. All they know is that just go out there. It is better. The grass is greener on the other side. Mm -hmm. So they're mm -hmm. willing because I haven't, haven't, after applying for visas over and over again and being rejected, they just that's the, to them that's, that's the, that's the only way you and you don't have you, you don't have here here's a family they don't have any um, sustainable means of income they are living below the poverty line there's no other way they don't see any other means of uh, you know escape so to them there's nothing you can yeah. tell them and of course they have the son of uh, Papa Chinidu <laughs> that, that has let's not let's not leave out of the yesterday. conversation <laughs> let's even say let's exactly. even say I'm just going to say I'm just going to say that. Um, the thing is that it's, you know, a, a game of chance. There's always that person who has done it mm. and who has successfully made it. Like yeah, Shola, right? Like Absolutely. Shola. So you like have Shola. a track record. Shola is Brito. Shola is... 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 Shola the necessary skills and means to survive Fantastic. or to get jobs legally in the, in the UK or the US and Canada. The reason why I say so is that I always say that if you have children, you've got to give them that second experience. You can't let your children grow up in Nigeria and think this is the norm. However, I've always said that if the government, look, I know what, for somebody to sell their house, to yes. sell their family house yes. and go and rent a property so that one child or two children can attempt to cross and go abroad, Without knowing whether it will be successful, without knowing whether they will make it and even remember who, it shows you how desperate. It's not, I will even say that's greed. People are just that desperate to think that, you know what, it's worth taking a chance. Even if one of these children makes it, we're, we're set up for life. And that shows you how sometimes hopeless the situation can be for some families in Nigeria, especially the middle income, you know, the old middle income families who are civil servants. And, and such. The, the things have become so bad. They can't get their pension. There's no means of livelihood. And somebody talked about a business. I, I'm a serial entrepreneur in Nigeria, even till now. And I will tell you that I've invested so much money, more money in Nigeria than I have in the UK. But my business in the UK do always do better right. than in Nigeria because I, in Nigeria, some government policy yes, will come and wipe it away. You start all over again. You know, it's a never ending cycle, and people are kind of tired of it all. And even the exchange rates that go is So, is, for, exactly. I mean, yeah, to lend my voice to this, having been in this space for a few years now, I think that it's really a situation of a chicken and egg approach. It's an issue where we have to look at different sides. And as Shola has rightly said, when hope is totally lost, right. believe me, you, uh, you resort to any means possible. That does not mean I am condoning the actions as declared by Eno. But what I'm saying here is that, as the last line of my advocacy said, how do we actually find the balance, civil society, government, and even the people themselves? What are we likely to do? Fundamentally, migration is a human right. As a human being, you have the right to move from place to place. But then one thing that I said in law is that my own right stops where your own begins. So while I may have the right to move to your country, I cannot come to your country without the established methodology right. and the prescriptions that mm -hmm. said, this mm -hmm. is how you come into my country. So what we're advocating for and what we are pushing for, and one thing that I have said all the while is that if you're going to migrate or leave your country to another place, do not go through the irregular routes. Right, yes. do, not, do not lose arm, limb, livelihood, and everything for a dream that you have no understanding or idea about. Find out what the real options are. Find out how you should go. And then also understand the place of developing your society. Mm -hmm. We are going to still need people who have gotten the experience and the wherewithal to come back. And let's not forget that remittance plays a high role in Nigeria's economic development. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. The local government and its importance is what Kunle wants to tell us about after the break. Thank you.